I guess it comes down to the fact that when you're in the Caribbean and you don't have a chance to specialize as you'd like to, I really want to be a fashion portrait photographer. And um, being in, in the Caribbean and you have to hustle, I had to dabble a little bit in each department to do a fashion photography, portrait, wedding photography, documentary, you know, covering events, PR work, you know, that kind of thing there. My personal style is basically intimate portraits of people. I like to sit down and have a conversation with somebody. One of the most interesting questions I think I could always ask somebody before I did a portrait of them is if there's going to be one image that I took of you and people are going to look at it and my job is to capture the essence of who you are in that photograph, how is it do you want to be remembered? It became a therapeutic you know, method for me where I started to see more of Trinidad um, for its beauty, accepting of its beauty. I didn't really have people show me around as much as I expected, so I travel a lot based off of jobs. While going there, I took little photographs of things that I found to be interesting or different. Things that were, that were coming to me in Jamaica are just things I didn't see when I was in Porto, Spain, or I didn't know when next I'd see it, so you know what, why not take it now while it's still there? It's actually interesting that the particular places I've photographed here in Trinidad, in the few years I've been here, seven years, that you go there now and they no longer exist. You know, they've transformed to a different space or it's moved on, you know. The way I photograph people, spaces, people in spaces, it's all anthropology in the sense that 10, 20 years from now, if you want to know what people look like in Trinidad, you can look at a photograph that I took probably and you're gonna go, this was a style that was hitting me. Because I love dark skins or people of color more than any other tone or quality, I try my very best to make sure that their skin tone is properly represented in any of my images that I do of them. One thing I find that a lot of photographers seem to omit or forget to do is doing that personal kind of like um, exposure for the skin tone of the person of color versus it. Um, do you know more average exposure? It's also something I'm not sure many people understand about the camera. The camera is doing a reading of reflective surfaces and being a person of color, we reflect less light than a person of non-color. Position of light always affects your photograph. I remember there's a, there's a photographer I looked at and one of his things that he always says is that put light where you want it take light where you don't want it. So people need to understand that you have flags, black flags that you can use to block light, and you can use the light to sculpt it to make sure you see exactly what you want and create the look that you want. When you think about flash photography versus continuous lights, it, you can probably get away with certain things. Sometimes it's cool to mix um, color temperatures where you have a cool and a, a warm tone but you, your photographer, this is where creative comes into. Typically the things I have in my camera bag when I go on a shoot, I have my camera, of course, a tripod, probably a reflector, and that's it. Is it good to recce before I shoot? Yeah, it's sometimes good, it's just so you have a better idea of what to prepare for, but you know, it's not always a case where you get that. Sometimes, you know, you just get dropped on location, like, yo, this is location. It's a uh, cliffside on the beach or somewhere else, Cuevas, Trinidad. And, you know, it's supposed to be a sunny day, but rain falls in and out for the day. But you have to make it work because it's the one day to shoot. So, yeah. I learned from one of my photographers I used to work with, Jeff Gamble. He's like, you have to shoot everywhere. A photographer must be able to shoot anywhere. All you need to do is look. And that's all I did. On that day, didn't know anything about the, the land survey that much, but I had a few ideas. Walked around with the creative director and just looked at possibilities of where we could do based on the time limit that we had for the day and the limited support. And I didn't have like a big team, it was a small crew. So it was just interesting just to, you know, move around and make sure we get everything done within a day. And I think we did a lot despite the different times that rain fell. And also after the rain, it created certain new spaces or viewpoints like, yo, this look better now since it rained or whatever. And also just proves that, you know, sometimes Murphy Law just 
try kicking you in the butt, but you have to just say, yo, suck him up on a bridge and move from front of me. You see, it came that way? Guys, I don't know. Boy, it doesn't look like it's easy enough. <laughs> I'm like, Murphy's dog is kicking your ass, and that has to say no. Look over there, it's great. Over there, it's great. Wow, okay. Alright, I think we're good there. Thank Damn it! Can't use a Jamaican slang.